Hello and welcome to another video of Breaking Bad English with me, David Crofts. Now, in this video, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to talk about the language cert exams, the spoken part. Language cert is an international organization which organizes exams in the English language as well as other languages and is an internationally recognized qualification for speakers of foreign languages. I am an interlocutor and that is a person who speaks to students or candidates when they take the speaking exam. I am not the examiner because the exam is always recorded and the recording is sent to professional examiners usually in the UK, who then listen to the recording and grade the students who take the exams. So I have a lot of experience of doing these exams. I have, in fact, been an interlocutor for probably more than 500 students over recent years. And I'm going to tell you in this video basically how to pass the exam. So first of all, before you start the exam, you need to warm up. That means with another candidate, get together and practice speaking some English with them. I know that might sound a little bit crazy, but it's not. You would warm up if you were going to do a sport and warming up for speaking English is exactly the same thing. So find somebody, speak English to them, talk about your hobbies, your family, what you do in your free time, what you ate for dinner yesterday, etc get into the habit of speaking English at least half an hour before you take the exam. Right, the next step is you go into the exam room and you sit down. The recording will not have started yet, but you will sit down at a table and in front of you, there will be a microphone. Of course, these days, uh, many students take the exam online. So that means they're using a computer to communicate with the interlocutor who might be in a different country. But that doesn't make any difference. You still follow exactly the same format of exam as I am showing you in this video. So the first thing that happens is you sit down and the interlocutor, or I in this situation, says to you, language cert, international ESOL speaking, communication level, 25th of April, 2021. And then the interlocutor will say your name. And he will say, for example, Jan Novak, exam begins. Hello, my name is David Crofts. Can you spell your family name for me, please? So now you must spell your family name. As I said before, in this situation, I've used the, the name Jan Novak. So you must say N-O-V-A-K, okay? You must say it clearly, slowly, accurately, and so that the listening examiner can hear it and understand it clearly. That's very important. You can also say good morning or good afternoon or hello before you say your name. Uh, where are you from? That's the next question. Many students just say Prague or Vienna. Well, in my opinion, that's not enough. Uh, you should say something more than that. If you're from Prague, you say, I am from Prague, which is the capital city of the Czech Republic. Again, you have created a full sentence, so it sounds a lot better. Now, the example I'm using in this video is the B2 level exam, so it's called the communicator level. The first part of the exam, part one, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself and your ideas. The first topic is the area where you live. Describe the area where you live. So there's the first question, describe the area where you live. Now, don't answer with just one sentence. You've got to 
produce some logical sequential sentences. So you can say, the area where I live is a small village. Uh, I live in a street next to a large field. Uh, there aren't many other buildings around. It is a residential street, but there are only 10 houses. In my village, we have two or three shops and we have a cafe and a small sports center. Finished. That's enough. You've explained where you live. OK, that's an ideal type of answer. The next question will now come up because there will be three to five questions in this section. The next question is about photography. So listen to the question carefully. What do you do with the photos you take? So you have to understand what the question is. What do you do with the photos you take? Uh, an example answer could be, I've saved them on my computer and I look at them later, or I make a photo album with them. I take the photographs to a developer and printer and they print copies of the photographs and I put them into my photo album. OK, that's a reasonable answer. Uh, I've used good English and I've answered in an appropriate way. Notice that if the question is in the present tense, what do you do with the photographs you take? You should usually answer in the same tense. If the question was, for example, how did you celebrate your last birthday? How did you celebrate? It's past tense. And so you should answer using past tense. That's quite clear, I think. It's the same for future, present perfect, past perfect, etc. Uh, the next question, and I said there would be between three and five questions in this section, is personal comfort. That's the topic. What sort of clothes do you wear for special occasions? You say, the sort of clothes I wear for special occasions are typically a suit, a shirt and a tie, but it depends on what special occasion it is. If it is a formal gathering, like for a wedding or an anniversary party, I would normally wear a suit. But if it is an informal occasion with friends, then I might wear jeans and a t-shirt. End of answer, okay. Uh, special occasions could be formal or informal. So as you like. But listen, it gives you the opportunity to speak. The most important thing in the uh, language cert exams is that you use it as an opportunity to show how good your English is. That's the important point. Now, after these three or five questions at the beginning, we now go to section two. Uh, by the way, in section one, uh, the interlocutor will not say good, excellent answer, or that's really good. He will not really pass any comments. So don't expect any encouragement. He might agree with you and say, that's interesting, or I see, but he's not going to tell you if you're doing well or you're doing badly. So don't expect any praise at this stage or at all during this exam. Now, part two I love it. It's an excellent part of the exam and it's a discussion between the interlocutor and you, the candidate. And it has two parts. We, get, we are given a situation which the interlocutor reads and you will then start the conversation or you will respond to the conversation and it will be clear by what the interlocutor says as to what you actually have to do. So. The first part, um, we're friends, I start. Do you want to come camping with me? So that's my question. Do you want to come camping with me? And you would say, oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, when are you going to go? And I would say, well, I'm thinking about going sometime this summer. Um, I'm not exactly sure when yet, though. And you would say, well, I'm free in August. Uh, if you could let me know exactly when you want to go, I think I would be able to come along. Uh, and I would respond, yes. And do you have any ideas where we could go? 
and you would go, well, I know some good campsites in Austria, uh, and I don't think they're very expensive. And I would say, that's a good idea. Do you think you could check it out on the internet? And you would say, yes, certainly. I think I'll, I, I can do that this evening and I'll let you know. We've spoken for maybe three or four times each, and that gives a conversation. Uh, you are able to respond to what I say, and I respond to what you say. Everything is logical. You're using the correct tenses. You're following my lead. It's great, okay? Now, in part two of this section, it's you that has to start the conversation. So I think that's a little bit more difficult. And I'll give you an example. You have seen an advertisement for a job in my shop. You want more information. You start. So you've got to think quickly here and you've got to think, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Take a deep breath and you think about what the situation is. So I'll read that again. You have seen an advertisement for a job in my shop. You want more information. You start. So you should say, um, excuse me, I've seen the advertisement about a job in your shop. Could I have a little bit more information? And I would respond, yes, of course, it's a part-time job. It's in the afternoons from two o'clock until six o'clock, uh, five days a week, Monday to Friday. Are you interested? And you would say, yes, I'm very interested. Uh, what type of things do you sell in this shop? Uh, well, actually, we sell electronics. Do you know anything about electronics? And you would say, yes, I'm very interested in electronics. In fact, photography and computers are my hobbies. So, um, yeah, I think I'd be good at this job. Um, well, could you come for an interview uh, on Friday? And you would say, yes, certainly. What time shall I come? And I say 4 p.m. OK, I'll be here at four o'clock on Friday. And by the way, my name is Jan Novak. Yes, I'll see you Friday. Bye. There we go. We've created a conversation. Not too difficult, but you've got to think quickly. You've got to listen to what the interlocutor says and you have to respond in an appropriate way using the correct tenses. But you've also got to be imaginative. You've got to imagine like it's a real situation and you are actually having this conversation in real life with someone. I know that this is for the purpose of an exam, but you have to imagine its reality. So that's it. That's part one and part two of the exam. And that will take a couple of minutes. The total time for the B2 level speaking exam is in fact 13 minutes. And we would have already covered something like six minutes in those first two sections. So, okay, in my next video, I'm going to talk about section three and section four of the speaking exam for language cert, B2 level. Uh, so join me on the next video when I will tell you how to pass this exam. And also, these videos are appropriate for all levels of the language cert exams from A1 all the way up to C2. So they are very important and very useful if you are planning on taking these exams. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.